thought I would come out of a familiar passage that we've heard a lot of times, but I, I, I want to approach it from another angle. Matthew chapter 26, beginning with verse 26, reading through verse 30. Mm -hmm. Amen. Words you could almost repeat. And Y'all look good this morning, bless you. Thank you. You're evenly scattered and and amen. Well balanced. That's just so nice. Amen. Amen. I ain't preaching to one side. Amen. I got evenly. This is wonderful. This is beautiful. And I thank you for being here. Amen. And I mean that because you could have stayed home. Amen. Or been someplace else. But you showed up. God bless your hearts this morning. All right. Uh, chapter 26 of Matthew's Gospel, beginning with verse 26, reads as follows. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of of olives. I want to talk about when Jesus sang. When Jesus sang. It is without question that Jesus was a person of many deeds. He could do many things. Teaching, preaching, casting out devils, calm storms, open eyes of the blind, turn water to wine, and heal all manner of diseases. He was what we would term today as a man usually and unusually gifted. He could do anything without failing. Everything he did was perfect. In fact, everything he did was perfect. When he taught in the synagogues, he stunned and baffled the lawyers and the doctors. In preaching the Sermon on the Mount, he held his audience spellbound. Some said, what man of man is this who talk and teach like him? We could say that if Jesus did it, it would be perfect. And that's why there's no wonder that there's nobody like him. Not only was he a person of many deeds, but he was also a person of many moods. Yeah, Jesus had his moods. He rejoiced, he, he wept, he, he sighed, he groaned, he became disgusted, if you recall, with the money changers and drove them out of the temple. Jesus did all of these things. When we look at him in the scope of his ministry and all that he was about, he's just fantastic. But there are two things we've heard very little of about him. We never hear much uh, in at all about him laughing or singing. Hmm. You ever think about that? Huh? Yeah. Proverbs 1, 26, when you get home, you might read it, shares with us about God's laughter, about God will laugh at our calamities and whatnot. Amen, the way he treats sinners and whatnot in times of eternity. The only place, though, that we find where Jesus sang is here in Matthew 26, 30. Check your scriptures, run your concordances. And I'll show you that in a minute. However, 
he's not singing a solo. But he's singing with a group. Because the scripture says, and when they. That's plural. It's a pronoun. They sang. Now, the first thing that claimed my attention is the nature of the song they sang. The text says they sang the, thank you, somebody's reading with me. They sang the hymn. Amen, huh? Not, not an anthem, not the hallelujah chorus, not a spiritual, not nobody knows the trouble I see. Not a gospel, thank you, Jesus. I've got Jesus, and that's enough. No. Not a jubilee. This is the day that the Lord has made. Or in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. No, 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 no. He didn't sing any of those. No, did they sing a ragtime? And I won't name one. Y'all name them. Not the blues. Amen. Yeah. No, when I lost my baby. Well, y'all, y'all, y'all name me some. Y'all name me some. Or oh, jazz. Amen. How many jazz fans I got in the house? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I love jazz. Amen. Ella Fitzgerald. And, amen. Dinah Washington. Amen. I love that crowd. Cornette and Nat was my favorite. Amen. Brooke Benton. Amen. I'm waiting for y'all to throw me one of yours, but you ain't. All right, that's my go. Amen, amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Throw, throw me some. Hey, hey, Kenny G. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. How many Kenny G fans I got in the house? Hallelujah. Yeah, talk to me this morning. Yeah. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Amen. I love Kenny G. I got to see the old Kenny G. Amen, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm trying to say is, depending upon the occasion and our moods, we sing all sorts of songs. Our occasion and our moods. Amen. I, I got a lot of Westerners. Amen. What's your name? Kenny Rogers. Amen. Glenn Campbell. Amen. Yeah. I, I got, and I'll go back. I go, well, I won't predate myself. Amen. But yeah. I, I got a whole lot of Western. There are times I just want some Western. Hear the story they tell and the truth they talk about, huh? <laughs> Amen. They get right down to it. Amen. Man stole my wife and my dog. Amen. You know, <laughs> huh? they get right down to it. They get, they get right down to it. They tell it like it is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, uh, I'm daydreaming about, well, no, I won't go there. Yeah, yeah, y'all might have heard, I'm daydreaming about night things in the middle of the afternoon. Then at night I get home, you make my daydreams come true. I mean, yeah, hey, maybe I better not go there. Amen. But, uh, <laughs> see, y'all got me acting silly this morning. <laughs> but, 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 but it depending upon our moods and how we feel, we sing different songs. Different songs, amen, huh? So, sometimes, sometimes there are times we need uh, our spiritual songs and our, yeah. our, our church music to keep yeah. us yeah. In, in a moment where we need strengthening it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then there are other times we feel loose and free. Yeah. Amen. And, and we want to let it fly. Yeah. But, but the nature of the song Jesus sang was a hymn. And I don't know whether you will agree with me or not, but a hymn. I turn a hymn as the last word in music. You see, uh, hymns sets the tone for a worshipful occasion. Just something about a hymn. One of my favorite before I used to preach is, I need thee. Amen. Yes, I need thee every hour. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something about that just sets the tone for me. That there's something about a hymn that sets the mood for a worshipful service. Now, now that's not to say that 
anthems or spirituals or gospels lack the power to set the service for worship. For, for any good and sacred song is a good vehicle to bring us into the presence of God. Amen. I, I love the way the choir sung this morning, this inspirational choir. Amen, huh? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they put their best into it this morning. Sang out of their hearts and out of their souls. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So music, like prayer, is used to set our minds in tune for God's visit. Well, if you check history, I believe it would tell you that the major characteristics of a hymn is characterized by thought and prayer. So the text says they sang the, the hymn. Uh -huh. Now the title or the words of the hymn we are not told. But we do know that the words of most hymns are usually characterized by the depth of sacred thought. Amen. When you enter a hymn, you into it. Now I'm keenly aware that this is not necessarily true of all hymns. For some do lack the wisdom that Paul described in Colossians 3.16. Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And watch this. Teaching and admonishing, amen, huh? One another in psalms, that means in songs, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen, huh? Right. It's just something about singing. Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul says, hymns should teach, admonish, and carry a quantity that's rich in spiritual depth. Uh -huh. no, notice Paul says, sing with grace mm. in your hearts. Yeah. Th this, this, this signifies to me that singing must be to God and not to or for people. Amen. That songs we sing for ourselves. Yeah. Amen. But no, our praise go to God. I feel that in much of our singing today, God is left out. My Lord, my Lord. In, too many, in too many cases, too much of our singing is to the people, for the people, and for entertainment of ourselves. So some folks sing for the pleasure of singing. And, and that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. nothing wrong with that. I, I love to see a singer who loves to sing. Don't you like to see a single love to sing when, when they into it and you, I mean, it radiates and you feel it. That's what made Michael Jackson so popular. Amen, huh? He, he seemed to love what he was doing. His whole body emanated. Everything about him was in that. And you couldn't help but catch it. It was charismatic in its, in its setting and in its, in its being, huh? But, 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 but I love more to see one who loves what and to whom they are singing about. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Huh? It's just something about it. I, I think that's what Robert said this morning about this choir. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Say, 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 it's, it's what they love yeah. that catches us, huh? Yeah. You, you feel their relevance. You feel their hearts and souls in it. So, 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 so singing, singing is good. Again, we don't know the title or the words to the hymn they sang. Nor do we know the composer. It's good to know the composer, you know. Like a book, you need to know something about the writer, the author. But most songs are, are born out of the experience of the composer's life. I wish I had time to tell you how blessed be the tie was that Bynes were born in. Amen, Amazing Grace by John Newton. And William Carpenter, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Amen, huh? Ah, I wish I had time to talk about Rock of Ages, Cliff for me. Yeah, John Wesley and Amen, Silent Night and Holy Night and Stand up, stand up for Jesus was born out of a fatal accident. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds a, a humble clergyman who was called to a larger congregation. Oh, my God. And 
I love on Jordan Stormy Banks I stand. I, I often tease our Jordan about that. Amen, huh? But, but on and on and on and on, uh, uh, songs are born out of experience. Y'all will catch this after a while where I'm going with it. So, so we don't know the, the, the person who wrote it. However, following Jewish custom, it could have been Moses, his 90th number of Psalms, or have been any one of those, or it might have been one of uh, Asper Psalms 27. We love that and so well. And I, ought to, I want to quote them, but I'm going to let you look them up. Core Psalms number 46. Or it might have been one of the king of composition himself, David, who wrote the 23rd number of Psalms. But whoever the composer was, it was a hymn that was worth singing. Yeah, yeah. And it fitted the occasion for Jesus sang with the group. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep in mind now he's on his way uh -huh. to the cross. He needed a fitting song. Yeah. He's on his way yeah. to give his life yeah. for you and me. Oh, he, he's on his way. Yeah. He just finished with the, with, with, with the Passover and instituted the Lord's Supper, getting ready to go to a cross. So some said the hymn they sang was most likely Psalms 115 or 117 and 118, and you go home and read those, you'll find it talks all about death and dying and his sacrificial substitution for us. And, and he said, they said it was traditionally, which was sung uh, after the Passover meal. You, you have to remember it was the Passover meal. It was sung in a response mode, like our old 100s. How many remember the old 100s? Huh? Yeah, yeah. The leader would pitch the words, and the rest would resound. Huh? We recite by responding those words in song. Oh, yeah. Jesus, no doubt, led and the disciples followed. Yeah. All right. it, it talked about the significance of his death and sacrifice from, for mankind. Uh -huh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus gave leadership to this hymn. No, notice, also, it was sung without trumpet, without heart. Without piano, uh -huh. without organ, without drums, without cymbals, without guitar. Amen, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, have y'all remember how we used to sing songs like that? When we didn't have these instruments to help us? We, we do not even know if they sang from a hymn book or if they knew it by memory. Most of our hymns we had learned by memory. We raise a hymn now. <laughs> Y'all caught it. But we do know that it was the last item on the agenda. All right, all right. The scripture says they all sang the hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Y'all know what took place at the Mount of Olives, don't yeah. you? There the Bible says that Jesus went into deep agony. Yeah. So much and so till he separated himself with uh, Peter, James, and John and went off to the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, and true. began to pray until sweat like blood yeah. ran down. Huh? Yeah. My God, huh? I mean, I mean, I mean, he needed a song. He needed a song like we do in the midnight hour when trouble shake the dungeon of our souls. When our loved ones are down and we don't know what to do when trouble strike our door, we need a song. We need a song. We need something to pick us up, something to give us strength. Hmm. Whether the words taught 
admonished or entreated, they must have been words appropriate for the situation. For the text says that Jesus sang. Now, now, now the most important thing that claimed my attention about this song is, is the occasion for the song. First, it was sung following the institution of the Lord's Supper. Uh -huh. Amen. That there's no more sacred moment in the church experience than that of calling into remembrance the substitutional gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. Who paid the price for our sins. No wonder 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, He was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In other words, he was about to take on a strange experience. Remember, his nature was foreign to sin. He's different from us. I was as foreign to righteousness. Amen. We are prone to sin, but, but his was foreign to sin. No wonder he prayed, Lord, will this cup pass? Do I got to drink this stuff? Can you imagine what was in that cup? Your sins and mine. What, what a horrible thing that, that he had to stomach, he had to take, he had to put into his body. And knowing that that would separate him from his father. Yes. He needed a song. Huh? Man, man, he, he needed a hymn. My God, huh? The... the, the this, 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 secondly, this hymn was sung as a prelude to Jesus' most crucial hour then. In life's crisis, we need a song. A hymn aims at the depth of the soul and prepares the soul for the crisis it must meet. I don't know about you, but it does me. It is imperative to note that Jesus did not prepare his disciples for this crisis. Amen. He didn't prepare them. He didn't get swords. Staves. He did not gather up, amen, uh, an ammunition. He, 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 he did something different, amen, huh? Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't get them ready for a battle cry. Didn't you hear him tell Peter, Peter, put up your sword. Right. Amen. He, he did not have them arm themselves with stones, but, but rather, guess what? He led them in a hymn. Led them in saying, sometimes when I come to church, it, it, the, the music is all I need. Sometimes just to hear the choir sing or somebody to lift an old number. Just, just, just sometimes a song ministers to my soul. I ain't slept all night, tossed and turned and tumbled. And worry in my mind and troubles won't leave me alone. But, but somebody sings a song that refreshes my spirit. Where I was weak, I made strong. Yeah. My God, huh? So, 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 so to get himself in tune, uh -huh. amen, for prayer and the cross, yeah. Yeah. he led them in a song. <laughs> right. can, can, can you recall the times when and where he could have sang but didn't? I mean, he could have sang at the wedding in Cana. That was a good time, but he didn't. Right. Right. He, he could have sang... At the grave of Lazarus, but instead he prayed. He could have sang when the when the tempest rose, but instead he said, "Peace be still," which did climax into a song. Master, carest thou not? Well, anyway, y'all know that song. Peace be still, huh? Pre preaching, preaching has its place. Praying has its place, and singing has its place. But here, while facing the greatest crisis of his life, Jesus chose to sing. Right. Songs have kept me, like I told you, in my midnight eye. Yes, sir, songs have held me up. In times when I didn't know which way to turn. Yes, yes, I remember singing. I, 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 I've seen the lightning flash, and I, I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dash and try to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. That, that, that's encouraging. I don't know about you, but that there's been times when I, I run down into some dark, deep pits and didn't know which way to turn, but the song came to me, I know a great Savior. I do. Don't you? I live by his favor. I do. Don't you? 
Oh, I don't know, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all. How, every, how the time somebody sang the Stand By Me? When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. Amen, huh? And, 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 and I used to hear Brother Thornton sing this all the time when he was despondent and down. Just a closer walk with thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. My God, and who can he forget? Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Huh? Oh, what a far pace of glory divine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good God of mercy. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lie down, lie down, thou weary one, thy head upon my breast. I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these Burdens alone. My God, huh? Can, can't you see him in the garden? Good God of mercy. Ready to face a hideous cross. Ready to die an ignominious death. Death of shame. Death of nakedness. Stripped of all that he's about. To took off his royal robe and laid it aside. And stepped down into humanity. And now ready. To hang himself as a lamb, frustrated and helpless, on an old Roman cross. Yeah. My God, yeah. I don't know about you, but I tell you, I wish I'd have been there. Uh -huh. They have sung that hymn, yeah. whatever it was, I wish I'd have been there. To catch the melody and what it must have done for Jesus. Yeah. To lift his spirit, to build him up and to strengthen him for that hour. Yeah. I don't know about you, but Lord! I hear of showers of blessing. Yeah. Thou art scattering full and free. Yeah. Let some drops right. now fall on me. Yeah. Anybody ever said that? Uh -huh. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Have you ever been in that position and in that place? Yeah. Good God of mercy, when you need some drops from heaven to come and fall on you. Yeah. To give you some inspiration. To yeah. give you some aspiration. To give you some strength. Yeah. To pick you up and... Put your feet back on solid ground. Uh, Lord, well, well, I'm through there. But Jesus sang. I tell you, he sang. If Jesus could sing, what about you and I? If songs were good for him in a dying hour, what about you and me? I, I don't know, like I asked you earlier, how many have gone to Staples Center? How many even want to be there? But good God of mercy, I, I, I doubt any of the songs they sing. Good God of mercy is going to be any songs that really uplift our spirits. Uh, any song that paves the way to salvation. Any songs that carry you through some hard times. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know all of Michael's song, but good God of mercy, I, I, that's what they probably will be singing. Uh, every one of Michael's songs, but none of those songs, good God of mercy, going to meet you in a midnight hour. None of those songs uh, are going to strengthen you, good God of mercy, when your heart press a dying pillar, when your head is dripping down in sorrow, and the brown, the rain is on your brow, and you roll and toss uh, all night long, uh, but oh, I know a song that will help me in that hour. Lord, uh, I hear of showers of blessing. Thou art scattering uh, full and free. Uh, let some drops uh, now fall on me. Fall on me, Lord, fall on me. Let some drops now fall on me. Good God of mercy. Good night, soldiers. Uh, Good night, soldiers. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but what a friend uh, we have in Jesus. Uh, all our sins uh, and griefs to bear. What a privilege uh, it is to carry everything uh, to God in prayer. Yeah! Hey, hey, hey. I tell you, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Yes! They took the bread and blessed it and broke it 
and gave it out among themselves. Uh, they took the wine and began to drink it uh, in remembrance uh, of his sacrificial death. Uh, but at the close, haven't y'all noticed uh, around this church uh, that at the end of communion, at the end of our Lord's Supper, you always hear me say, and they all uh, sang to him uh, and went out, uh, and the choir uh, leads us uh, in a song, uh, a song uh, that should follow us home, uh, a song uh, that should guide us home, uh, a song, uh, because I can't be there, but a song can be there. And listen, uh, you don't have to know the tune. Uh, you don't have to know all of the words. Uh, you just catch the melody uh, in your heart. Uh, and good God of mercy, uh, in your heart. Uh, it's in my heart. Uh, it's in my heart. Uh, that melody divine. Uh, it's in my heart. Uh, hey! Uh, good God of mercy. Yeah. Yeah, how many like me, you can't sing? Yeah, you can't sing, and, and I can't sing. Uh, I can't hold uh, a tune in a bucket, huh? but good God of mercy, I got the melody down in my heart. Uh, I got the song uh, in my heart. Uh, yeah, and you can't beat me uh, when I'm singing in my shower, uh, when I'm singing in my bathroom. Uh, you can't beat me. Uh, good God of mercy. Uh, it's just about something uh, about singing uh, to the Lord because when I start singing uh, and calling his name, uh, look like uh, something happens uh, in my room. Uh, look like the spirit uh, begin to get all around me. I feel like I'm secure uh, and ain't a problem in the world. I, I can conquer everything. Uh, and even I get so happy, uh, I say to myself, uh, sing on, boy. You singing good. Uh, hey! Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they all sang to him uh, and went out. Good God from glory. Uh, yeah! I'm going to quit right there. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Yeah. Why are you standing on your feet? Somebody, somebody, somebody through this experience of Jesus singing a song have come to the concept that if Jesus sang, in a moment of trials and tribulations, it's all right for us to also sing. But you want the song in your heart. You want the melody in your spirit. I don't know what your favorite song is, but you know what it is. But as we come today, as we prepare today, let that melody be in you. Let that song be in your heart and in your mind. And whatever you're going through, whatever trials and tribulations, whatever is frustrating you, let that song surface in your heart. I suggest now in order to have that kind of melody, that kind of inspiration and aspiration within you, you ought to start with him who sang and know the power of a song. And him, I don't mean H-Y-M-N. I mean him, H-I-M. J-E-S-U-S. Jesus. Jesus 